A black hole is thought in current physics to be a point that absorbs all electromagnetic radiation, a point in which the density is so high that even light cannot escape it. In my theory, a black hole looks more like a star, an object that is absorbing information but is as well radiating information that is absorbing energy and radiating energy in a coherent matter, in an organized matter. Everything from the universe to quarks and everything in between can be characterized as black holes or singularities of different sizes, different masses, and different uh, rotation rates. So that what we have for the universe is a fractal series that goes from the smallest things we know of to the largest things we know of that are all the same thing, a black hole or a singularity. We're living in different scale black holes. In fact, everything is a different scale black hole from subatomic particles to planetary systems to stars and galaxies and quasars and universes are embedded black holes. Black holes in this sense is a larger, more generalized picture of a black hole where black hole is written a uh, whole W-H-O-L-E instead of um, a whole, it's the whole. If you think of the whole universe as a fractal series of singularities, then there's a part inside what's called the event horizon, a point where the event horizon defined as where light is pulled into a closed orbit, so that that's why they call them black holes. The light goes in, it orbits the event horizon, and you never see it come out again, so it's a black hole. Inside that event horizon, all the clocks are stopped or running backwards, and therefore all the information of all time is available within the event horizon. And if you think about the topology of all this, there's only one event horizon. And if everything's made out of the same kind of singularity, then there's really only one thing in the universe. It's just all folded up a lot into trees and dolphins and honeybees and humans and everything else. But we're all made out of the same stuff. And if all the information is available in the event horizon, then all the information of the whole universe is available from every point. As I show in this model, it has a singularity in the middle that produces, and the torque of space-time and the Coriolis forces produces these vertices that extends from the singularity down and up and then it has these uh, forces because of its centrifugal forces that pushes the information out and allow and then when the information radiates far enough then eventually it gets caught by the gravitational field of the black hole again and falls back in and it produces this double torus function that I describe in my work. And that fundamental double torus feedback of space-time, I believe, is the source of the information network that produces our universe. The technologies that becomes possible when you understand the fundamental forces of the spin of all things is that you can tap into that force, you can tap into that fundamental spin and thus you're getting energy out of it. If that energy is in the vacuum everywhere, then it's available everywhere. You just gotta figure out how, how the vacuum works so that you can tap into it and now you have a source of energy anywhere you are because there's vacuum everywhere. And if you just get the tiniest amount, it makes oil and every other power source you've ever thought of obsolete. Then we would have a source of energy that could really transform our society and allow us to work with the forces of nature in a much more coherent way rather than destroying the forces of nature to generate energy, which is ultimately going to bring our downfall. And just tap into the fundamental spin that spins the Earth in the first place, that spins the Sun in the first place, that spins the galaxy in the first place, and just tap into the source of that force. A 
on the personal level, the benefit from understanding this new level of physics is that you start to understand more fundamentally how you got there. What is reality? How, did, how does reality respond to your experience? And what is the fundamental principles of the feedback between your observation and your interpretation and how is the universe responding to that? It's the fundamental dynamics of everything from the most infinitely small level to the most infinitely large, and including us as human beings. So it's how we interact with the universe is, is a crucial part of the theory. And you go inside and you connect through your stillness to all other points. It's really, that's fascinating. And if all the information is available in the event horizon, then all the information of the whole universe is available from every point. And we just have to couple into that, which is what the great masters have been trying to show us for centuries. And when you can get to that space where you can step aside from your ego and just let it all in, absorb it, that's where the magic is. It's in that instant now. I see everything as all one in the wholeness of it. And so now we're going through the scientific method with the wonderful opportunities and tools of oscilloscopes, spectrum analyzers, and drill presses and electronics and all these tools to actually support this vision that is usually considered a spiritual tradition, but it actually has to do with our daily lives and how we can function in the world and how we can utilize these forces in a positive manner to support what we need for our betterment of humankind. When you put these higher thoughts, these higher spiritual, philosophical thought, and you define it in the correct physics and in the correct mathematics, all of a sudden it's like a flower open and all of a sudden it's like a gift come out. And the gift is that you're able to understand in a profound way the forces of creation and how you're interacting and how you're part of it. You start to understand that every point is connected to all other points. When you start to understand that the billions and billions and billions of atoms you're made of are all networked in an incredible structure in the vacuum that connects all things. When you start to understand that you have an influence on all of the things of the universe and the universe has an influence on you, that you start to understand that feedback between what's outside of yourself and what's inside of yourself, all of a sudden you become a conscious participant in that feedback of creation that's able to influence reality uh, in a way that is most beneficial for yourself and for the whole, for the whole of humanity, for the whole of the universe, if you'd like it.